In this video, we're going to talk about Slater's rule and how to use it to calculate or estimate the effective nuclear charge. So let's work on this example. Let's use Slater's rule to estimate the effective nuclear charge of a 2s electron in beryllium. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to write out the electron configuration. Beryllium's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2. So we need to calculate the effective nuclear charge for a 2s electron. Now the effective nuclear charge can be calculated using this formula. It's Z minus S. Z is basically the atomic number of the element. And you could find that using the periodic table. So Z for beryllium is 4. Now we need to calculate S, which represents the inner shell electrons. To calculate S using Slater's rule, for electrons in a lower group, let's say n minus 1, you need to give it a value of 0.85. For electrons in the same group, 0.35. For electrons, let's say two groups lower, we're going to give it a value of 1. And that's based on Slater's rule. So for these two electrons, they're one energy level lower than the 2s electron. So we're going to give it a value of 0.85. So this is going to be 2 times 0.85. Now, there's one 2s electron that we need to take into account. Because there's a total of two electrons, and one of them we're trying to analyze, the other one will fall in this region or for that value. So that other electron that we're not analyzing, we're going to give it a value of 0.35. So now let's add this up. So we have 2 times 0.85 plus 1 times 0.35. So that gives us an S value of 2.05. So now going back to this equation, Z minus S, S is 2.05. And so 4 minus 2.05 is 1.95. And this is the effective nuclear charge for a 2s electron based on Slater's rule. Now, if you go to Wikipedia and you look up the effective nuclear charges for different elements, for beryllium, for the 2s electron, you'll see a value of 1.912. So as we can see, this is a good estimate compared to the actual reported values for the effective nuclear charge of a 2s electron in beryllium. Now let's try another example. Use Slater's rule to estimate the effective nuclear charge of a 2p electron in fluorine. So just to review, when calculating the effective nuclear charge for s and p electrons, if you're dealing with electrons in the same group, give it a value of 0.35. If it's one group lower, give it a value of 0.85. If it's two or more groups lower, it could be two, three, or four, give it a value of one. So the first thing we need to do is determine the electron configuration of fluorine. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Now, for the 1s electrons, they're one group lower than the 2p electrons. So we're going to give it a value of 0.85. So there's two 1s electrons, so this is going to be 2 times 0.85. For the 2s electrons, they're in the same energy level as the 2p electron. So we have 2 here, and we have 4 in 2p5 because we're analyzing one of the 2p electrons, which means that we're not analyzing the other four 2p electrons. So there's six electrons in the second energy level, not including the one that we're analyzing. So I'm going to write 6 times 0.35, because all six of them are in the same energy level. Now, let's do the math. So 2 times 0.85 
plus 6 times 0.35. So that gives us an S value of 3.8. So now let's calculate the effect of nuclear charge. It's going to be the atomic number of fluorine minus S. The atomic number of fluorine is 9 based on the periodic table. S is 3.8. So 9 minus 3.8 is 5.2. And so this is the effective nuclear charge for a 2p electron in fluorine. Now according to Wikipedia, the actual value for this is, I know I wrote it down somewhere, the actual value is about 5.1. So 5.2 is a good estimate. When you're dealing with elements with a high atomic number, you're going to see that the estimate begins to deviate more from the actual value. Now, let's try another example. So this time, let's focus on the 3D electron in titanium. So let's begin by writing the electron configuration. It's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then 4s2, 3d3. Now, for those of you who may have difficulty writing the electron configuration, go to YouTube and type in electron configuration organic chemistry tutor. I have a lot of videos on this topic, and so I can show you a simple way on how you can write the electron configuration if you need help with that. Now, when calculating the S value for D and F electrons, the rules are a little bit different. So, if you're dealing with an electron in the same group, you're still going to give it a value of 0.35. If it's in a group lower or two groups lower, you're just going to give it a value of 1 instead of 0.85. So those are the rules when dealing with D and F electrons, if you wish to estimate the effective nuclear charge for that. So this is more than one group lower, so we're going to give it a value of 1. Now there's 8 electrons in the second energy level, so we're also going to give that a value of 1. Our focus is the 3D electron, and so the second energy level is one energy level lower than this one. Now, for the 3s2 and 3p6 electrons, they're in the same energy level as the 3d electrons. There's eight of them, and we're going to give it a value of 0.35. Now, the 4s electron is in the higher energy level than the 3d electron, so we're not going to have any shielding effect for this. Now, for the 3d electrons, we're analyzing one, but we still have to deal with the other two, which are in the same group as this 3D electron. So subtract this number by 1 and then multiply that by 0.35. So let's go ahead and add these numbers together. So it's going to be 2 plus 8 plus 8 times 0.35 plus 2 times 0.35. So the S value that I have is 13.5. So now let's calculate the effective nuclear charge. It's Z minus S. The atomic number for titanium is 23 based on the periodic table. 23 minus 13.5. 23 minus 13 is 10. 10 minus 0.5 is 9.5. So this is our estimation based on Slater's rule. Now, according to Wikipedia, the effective nuclear charge for a 3D electron of titanium, the reported value is 8.983. So as we can see, there's a significant deviation, but it's not that bad. 9.5 is not too far away from 8.983. Now this is going to be the last example that we're going to talk about. In this example, we're going to focus on estimating the effective nuclear charge of the 1s electron in these three different elements, lithium, magnesium, and potassium. 
And when dealing with the 1s electron, s will simply be 0.3. Now, this will give us an accurate answer when dealing with light elements. When we're dealing with heavier elements, the uh, estimation will not be as accurate. And so let me illustrate that. Now let's start with lithium. So let's use the formula. The effect of nuclear charge is equal to Z minus S. Lithium has three protons, so its atomic number is, th is three. Three minus 0.3 is 2.7. So this is the estimation for the 1s electron in lithium. Now the actual value for lithium is 2.691. 2.691 and 2.7, that's close enough. But now, let's look at the next example. So let's consider magnesium. The atomic number for magnesium is 12. So it's 12 minus 0.3, which gives us an answer of 11.7. Now the actual value for magnesium is 11.609, which is not far off from 11.7, but the deviation in the case of magnesium is greater than that of lithium. And let's look at one more example, potassium. Potassium has an atomic number of 19. So 19 minus 0.3 gives us an estimation of 18.7 for the effective nuclear charge of the 1s electron. Now the actual value based on Wikipedia is 18.49 for potassium. So as you can see, the deviations increases when dealing with heavier elements. But now you know how to use Slater's rule to estimate the effective nuclear charge of an electron in an element. Thanks for watching.